Good morning, good morning, good morning. Merry stupid o'clock, everyone. And yes, I am having to get up at stupid o'clock on my birthday because we have that little thing, what we like to call call center hours. And well, you know how it goes. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, folks, it is my 37th birthday. Yay! I won't actually get to celebrate till tomorrow because I'm an adult and it sucks. Anyways, we are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we get going, the usual disclaimers, of course. First of all, you are going to see the link to this very damning piece of law here right there in the description box right along with the other pertinent links of the stop the shock campaign including autistic hoya's massive archive where we received the bulk of our material on the videos on the jrc on this channel as well as the ever-present tim plates folks it is my 37th birthday today what i would like to see is to not only for those who haven't already signed the signed those templates and clicked on their senators, I'd also like you to share the links to that template on all your social media. Let's put pressure on our legislators to end adverse of therapy, improper restraints and seclusion inside public schools. It kills people every year, all right? We also have the ever-present change.org shut to Judge Rotenberg Center down petition, which is very much self-explanatory. Also, when we are talking about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and sometimes catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you have young children present, please use your headphones. Folks, also, it is 3.33 a.m. stupid o'clock in the morning. I'm sure... Maybe, possibly, you can hear my co-host back there lodging his complaints with the union against mommies that they get up so early in the morning. So, if I fumble over any of my words, if you hear him lodging his protests in the background, or if I just run off into explicitives, my apologies in advance. All right, we are going back to where we left off yesterday, which is as and for a 10th cause of action against the defendants for violation of U.S. Section 1983 as related to IDEA. Now, for those who are unfamiliar for what IDEA is, IDEA is a national law. It's called the Individualized Education Act, and it is used to protect the rights of disabled people to a proper public education. There's a lot more to it to that than that, but for those who are parents, especially, learn the IDA. Live and breathe the IDA, okay? It is your best friend. It is your best friend friend to make sure that your school absolutely acts in the best interests of your child, all right? Now, for those who are new, this is the case in regards to Evelyn and Antoine Nicholson versus the JRC. See? Stumbling over words already. Mr. Mew! Kitty kitty meow meow? Kitty kitty meow meow? What's your manners? What's your manners, Mr. Mew? Are we lodging complaints? Do we have a list of demands? We do? Kitty has a list of demands. But he's going to have to wait. Mommy got to do a video. You want to come up here? You want to say hi to the peoples? You don't. No, we should. Don't wanna, don't wanna, nose. You're a good boy. 
Sorry. <laughs> All right, so back to where we left off yesterday. Plaintiffs repeat and reallege each and every allegation set forth in paragraphs I through 169 above, as if the same were more fully set forth at length below. Excuse my allergies. <clears throat> In 1975, Congress enacted the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Sorry, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. It's morning. I can barely remember my own name. Just, just saying. 20 U.S.C. Section 1400 at Sequested, which was recently amended in 2004. The IDEA ensures and protects the right of every disabled child to be provided with a free, appropriate public education, FAPE, and the least restrictive environment, which emphasizes special education and related services designed to meet the student's unique needs and prepare them for employment and independent living. As is detailed in the paragraphs above, the defendants failed to provide Antoine, a disabled individual within the meaning and intent of the IDEA, with a FAPE in the least restrictive environment, which emphasized his unique needs and thus has failed to prepare him for employment and independent living. The existence, the continued existence of the JRC flies in the face of IDEA. And isn't that a federal law? How do they continue to not get punished again? Just saying. Saying is all. As is detailed in the paragraphs above, the defendants failed to develop a legal and or appropriate IEP or ITP or similar plan for Antoine's education, training, and treatment. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above of the Freeport School District were carried out by the Freeport School District in its official capacity as a municipality. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above, the JRC were carried out by the JRC under the color of state law. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above, uh, defendants deprived Antoine of his federally secured rights and privileges under IDEA and therefore violated the Civil Rights Act of 1871, 42 U.S.C. Section 1983. So they have broke federal law. It has been proven in court they've broke federal law, and yet they continue to exist. Can somebody explain this shit to me? By reason of foregoing, plaintiffs have been damaged in a sum to be determined at trial. As for the 11th cause of action against the defendants for violation of 42 U.S.C. Section 1983, as relates to the rehabilitation the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Plaintiffs repeat and reallege each and every allegation set forth in paragraphs 1 through 178 above, as if the same were more fully set forth at length below. In 1973, Congress enacted Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. 29 U.S.C. Section 794. The Rehabilitation Act ensures and protects the right of handicapped individuals to receive even-handed treatment in relation to non-handicapped individuals. The acts of the Freeport School District and the JRC, detailed in the paragraphs above, established that Antoine, a disabled individual under the meaning and intent of the Rehabilitation Act, was denied the benefits of a fate. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above, of the Freeport School District were carried out by the Freeport School District in its official capacity as a municipality. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above, of the JRC were carried out by the JRC under the color of state law. So, Brahma! Stop! Stop! Sorry, folks. Such acts, as well as those detailed in the paragraphs above, of the defendants deprived Antoine 
of his federally secured rights and privileges under the Rehabilitation Act and therefore violated the Civil Rights Act of 1871, 14, sorry, 42 U.S.C. Section 1983. By reason of the foregoing, plaintiffs have been damaged in a sum determined at trial, and they say they teach their students civil rights. We're going to teach you civil rights while we violate yours. As and for a 12 case, sorry, and as for a 12 cause of action against the defendants for attorney's fees pursuant to 42 U.S.C. section 1988, plaintiffs repeat and reallege each and every allegation set forth in paragraphs 1 through 186 above as if the same were more fully set forth at length below. As a result of the defendant's violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1871, the Freeport School District and the JRC are liable for plaintiff's reasonable attorney's fees pursuant to the Civil Rights Attorney Fees Award Act of 1976, 42 U.S.C. Section 1988. By reason of foregoing, plaintiffs are entitled to an award of attorney's fees in a sum to be determined after trial. Wherefore, upon all the foregoing, plaintiffs demand that a monetary judgment hereby be entered in favor of the plaintiff. On first cause of action against the Freeport School District in the amount to be determined on, at trial. On the second cause of action against the JRC in an amount to be determined at trial. And punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial. On third cause of action against the Freeport School District in an amount to be determined at trial. On the fourth cause of action against JRC in an amount to be determined at trial and punitive damages to be determined at trial. On fifth cause of action against the Freeport School District, an amount to be determined on at trial. On sixth cause of action against the JRC, an amount to be determined at trial, and punitive damages an amount to be determined at trial. On the seventh cause of action against the Freeport School District, any amount to be determined at trial, and punitive damages an amount to be determined at trial. On the eighth cause of action against the JRC, an amount to be determined at trial, punitive damages, an amount to be determined at trial. On the ninth case of action against the Freeport School District, an amount to be determined at trial. On tenth cause of action against the Freeport School District, an amount to be determined at trial. On eleventh cause of action against the Freeport School District, an amount to be determined at trial. The 12th cause of action against the Freeport School District in amount to be determined at trial. On all causes of action against defendants, such other further and different relief as this court deems proper, including costs and disimbursements of this action. So let's think about this now that we've gone astray. This case, the JRC and the Freeport School District were found guilty on all counts. All counts. Granted, this is a civil lawsuit, so there were no criminal charges involved. But there should have been. There should have been. And this very lawsuit should have given the state of Massachusetts, hell, the federal government, more than enough to large a full detailed investigation of this place. It should have been more than enough with the facts proven at this trial to get this school closed down. And yet, in spite of the fact that to this day, to this day, it continues to violate multiple federal laws, IDEA, IEP, ITP apparently, and the freaking civil rights bills and human rights bills, and yet this school continues to exist. All on a technicality, on a settlement agreement that should have been thrown out a long damn time ago. Wrap your brain around this. Have you heard of any other center, any other center, that have violated 
that many federal laws on a daily basis and yet continue to exist to this day. And on that note, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out for this morning. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. Feed that algorithm. <clears throat> I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.